Pivot tables look a right mess by default, but luckily it's very easy to correct them and make them look good. And that is what this video will show you how to do. Hi, I'm John and this is Up For Excel. Welcome to part two of my five step pivot tables overview. Today we're talking about layouts and styles and how to make a pivot table look good. Now in part one, I showed you how to set up a pivot table from scratch. So if you missed that, there's a link on screen or there's a link in the description below. So check that out. I'm starting with the basic pivot table that we left off with in part one. And we're going to make that into a nice presentable report. And if you want a copy of the spreadsheet I'm working on, plus the finished version at the end of the video, just click on the link in the description and I'll be sent straight to you. Let's get straight into it. One of the key goals with the layout options and styles is that you want the data to look presentable. Um, at the moment, that is not something on screen. It's not something I would want to print out and give to somebody. It's a bit messy. So the first thing, um, if we go to the design of the pivot table, you can see straight you've got all of these options on the design tab. So I'm going to talk you through each one of these and you can see what it means. So subtotals, we could remove them. And you can just see that that, that has gone straight away. Or we can group them at the bottom. So we have that. Um, or the default, which is they're grouped at the top. Grand totals, we can turn them off completely. So that takes them off the bottom there. Um, we can switch them back on for columns. Now, in order to show this, if I remove profit temporarily from there, and we go back to our, um, sorry, we will, we go back to showing uh, shipping mode as columns and customer segments. You can now see if we, the default would be to have a grand total for consumers, for example, or corporate. And we can then just have them for the columns, for example. And that's a good point, actually. You see what happened there? The pivot table field disappears. And that happens if you click outside of pivot table completely. The, it completely disappears. So to get it back, just click inside that, and then you're back on the design thing. So that's grand totals. So I'm going to put it on for all. The layout. Now, you can, the default layout is compact form. So clicking on that will effectively do nothing. Now if I move this down here and put profit back in as well, which is where we were before, we get a better view of what the different layouts look like. So if you do outline form, and what that's done is it's moved the shipping mode into a whole new column. It can actually be useful if you're using this um, in, in a different, that you're building formulas based on this pivot table. Tabular basically shows more, yeah. And then you can repeat all item labels. Now that's particularly useful if you're linking to the pivot table again, because you'll get the fact that it's consumer and express air. And then um, you can switch that back off again. You also have these blank row in where you can insert blank row, which can look better, look slightly neater. Um, if we go back to say uh, that kind of form, and then we might just as well put subtotals on the bottom. So this that could look uh, much better, for example. You then have these tick boxes where you can take off the headers. Now, it doesn't actually move them, it just treats them um, as bold or not. Column headers, the same thing, whether you want them looking like a proper table. Banded rows will, will give you, make it easier if you're reading across rows, and banded columns, the same if you've got many, many columns, that can be useful. You also have all of these different styles that you can drop down on. 
and, and instantly make it look a lot better. So we will stick with a fairly default style at the moment. Now, one thing that we definitely need to sort out is the number formatting. Now, the best way of doing that is if you click on the actual, right click on the actual numbers and go to value field settings or even number format actually, click straight on number format. If we knock out the decimal places and put a comma there, for example, and click OK, that looks better straight away. And But it's only done it for the sales column because it will do it for each data field. And the reason for that, incidentally, is because it might be that one of the fields is a percentage or, you know, or, or you need to show it in a completely different format. So you have that option. So number format again. We'll change it to number, no decimal places. So there. So that is looking much better. I think I will just play around with the style and see if we can get something that looks quite nice. I think potentially um, something like that, something like that could go quite nice. Could look quite nicely. And you can think, do things like make that fold. Right. Now one other tip you can do is one thing I don't like on this pivot table is that it says here row labels, which is unnecessary. And you can switch that off. If you go to the analyze tab, you'll see at the far right, you have a show, show grouping and you can take field headers off and that instantly toggles between showing row that button there. You can also remove these these that you expand and collapse but you can remove those buttons as well and that might look more like a standard kind of report field list is toggling the actual pivot tables field button but right um you might not like the fact it says sum of sales as well so you might want to change that and you can literally just edit that in that field there and you might want to call it total sales one thing you can't do, and we'll do this with profit, if I go in here, push F2 as well and edit it here, let's call that profit and push enter. Now straight away, what you get is that the field name already exists and that's because in your source data, it's, you have a column called profit. And you can't have a column in your pivot table or row or anything, in fact, in your pivot table with the same name as that in your source data. So if you want it on your pivot table to be called profit, the best way, the workaround to that is to go back to your original table and call it something like um, profit star or anything other than profit or, or just put like a star in front of all of your order data column headers. So we can't call it profit there. I'm just going to call it, sorry, total profit. And you can do all of your standard kind of formatting like um, on the home menu. So you can right align that, for example, uh, make things bold or not bold. So that's looking pretty good. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget you can download the spreadsheet by clicking on the link in the description below and then you can see you can play around with the pivot table or you could just use it to work back through this video and start from scratch. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss it out and don't forget let's get these excel skills up and these task times down. See you soon. Nothing will save you more time in Microsoft Excel than learning the shortcut keys. That's why I've pulled together this one page cheat sheet of all the everyday essential Excel shortcuts. These are the shortcuts I use day in, day out to get fast results and save me time in Excel. I'm giving this away today completely free. It's part of the promotions for this channel. Just click on the link with the description and I'll send you this straight away. Don't waste any more time in Excel. Get this free cheat sheet right now. Click the link.